Hey everyone, that tuning in to today's video. It's January Friday today, the first one of 2015. Didn't do it last week, of course, because it's Boxing Day. So uh, this is the first uh, uh, JMA Friday update of the year. We'll be going ahead through January for this one. Takes us to the end of the month. So we'll see what the Japanese model uh, thinks we have in store for uh, the month that we're currently in. Also, have a look at the CFS, and then I'll have a look at some charts of a shorter range time frame through uh, the 8-10 day time frame as well. So uh, quite a lot going on. Before we get on with that, let's just say about the ads. There's uh, links to articles on most pages at gazlovies.com have a browse your widgets any articles that you're interested in please do just click through uh, there's green keyword ads on some of the pages you write so oh green keyword ads if you click through the uh, word go to advertise website you support gazlovies.com you do that and there's yellow contextual weather related ads on those pages as well so have a look at what those are about anything there that you're interested in uh, please do click through now as I explained in the video yesterday I've uh, started off with some new software we've got a new screen recorder got a new screen highlighter I'm still not entirely used to uh, this software, so hope you bear with me. It may be a little bit of a uh, little bit of an experimentation again uh, today as I play around with some of the tools uh, that we've got uh, to forecast with now uh, for the videos. But I uh, hope you bear with me. I may uh, need a little bit of time just to get everything together, but uh, hopefully uh, it'll uh, run smoothly as yesterday's did. So let's get on with the Japanese update. Um, we've got the 500 millimeter height anomalies here broken down into weekly periods um, and I managed to flip these around so that uh, we're looking at uh, the normal hemisphere on our side of the hemisphere the British Isles is just here um, blue is extrapolating to low pressure orange and red extrapolating to uh, high pressure and the black lines of course indicating uh, the jet stream so for the uh, coming weekly period this one taking us from the first to the 8th of January, so the week that we're uh, in, we've got a deep trough of low pressure in the central part of the Atlantic, going up towards south of Greenland and around Iceland as well. There's a ridge here uh, down to uh, the south of the country, stretched from the Azores into the Mediterranean, and we've got a strong westerly jet stream blowing through the country, so uh, it's a pretty good representation of the week that's ahead. Uh, we're going to find this ridge in the south, gradually, I think, being eroded away through the course of next week by this deep trough of low pressure in the Atlantic and eventually it could turn quite unsettled through the course of next week and maybe even uh, perhaps uh, a little bit stormy. Um, now as we run through to the next uh, weekly period, this one taking us from the 8th to the 15th of the, uh, January, if anything we're strengthening the trough of low pressure, the uh, below average heights is deepening in the Atlantic as this ridge is being uh, forced a little bit further towards the south going down towards the Mediterranean so uh, we really are bringing in a very unsettled flow there the jet stream is running through the country um, really strong jet and this uh, deep trough of low pressure is massive low pressure in the northern part of the Atlantic could be spawning off lots of secondary areas of low pressure that's a pretty unsettled looking chart uh, going through the second week of January could turn increasingly stormy perhaps even uh, with that one of course the flow is west it's off the Atlantic so it's not going to be particularly cold you could get little cold snaps coming through as the areas of low pressure clear and then you get a uh, northerly wind on its sort of backside but uh, really no that's not a particularly uh, cold pattern the uh, flow is not from the north or from the east uh, with that one and then finally, the uh, final two weekly period, this will take us from the 15th to the 29th of January, so right up to the end of the month. It's a similar uh, pattern, although a little bit of a change. The uh, trough is becoming more centred to the north of Scotland, and the heights are lowering a little bit down to the south. They're going off more uh, towards Italy and southeastern parts of Europe, maybe around Greece uh, and Turkey. Um, also, the high pressure in the Atlantic is pulling back uh, towards the coast of Newfoundland. The flow is still generally westerly, but I think it's coming a little bit further south. So that could be a little bit cooler uh, through that week. And this could be transitional. It may be that we're going from that really sort of unsettled, stormy, but pretty mild first couple of weeks into something a little bit colder into the uh, second half of the month. That's very speculative, and I'm really just putting my sort of specula speculation on that there's not a great deal of, ev of evidence but th there are rings between the lines there signs of a subtle change with the above average heights to the south sort of pulling apart and something going off in towards the central part of the Atlantic some of it going off towards southeastern Europe 
possibly allow this trough to dig southwards a little bit and maybe starting to entrench uh, somewhat colder air. I wouldn't necessarily say we're talking about depths of winter here at all, um, but somewhat colder air could be starting to push down uh, through the uh, final two weeks of the month. So perhaps signs of a change there with the Japanese late on in month. But overall, that's a pretty mild, uh, pretty unsettled, and possibly at times even quite a stormy January being predicted. The uh, CFS V2 is uh, very similar, really. These are 500 millibar heights broken down again to weekly periods. Now, this uh, hasn't been updated since uh, New Year's Eve, so uh, we haven't had an update on this for a couple of days, but the last update, this is what it was showing. Um, again, really sort of extrapolating to uh, high pressure, blue, uh, green is extrapolating to low pressure. So what we're looking at for the coming week, going from uh, the 30th, 1st of December through to the 6th of January is that this area of high pressure is down uh, to the south and southwest of the country. You've got low pressure up in the north. The flow is going something like that. Overall, that's sort of an idea about the high pressure is dominating to start off with, but gradually being broken down. I think through the course of next week, we will find that ridge slowly but surely uh, being broken down from uh, the north and the northwest. As we go through to the next uh, week here, this takes us from the 7th to the 13th of January. And clear evidence of what I was just talking about. The ridge is slipping away uh, to the south. When it's going down uh, to be sitting off the coast of Spain and Portugal. We've got this area of low pressure becoming much more influential up to the northwest of the country the flow is coming through the British Isles like that so it's turning much more unsettled then as we're going through into the 7th to the 13th January that high pressure being pushed further southwards again very deep trough similar to the JMA so you could be spawning off little storms um, and nasty little areas of low pressure from that one as we move through into the next week period this takes us from the 14th to the 20th of January and the trough is more or less centred over the top of the country then. Uh, we've got the below average height sitting more or less over the top. Um, the jet stream again is going through uh, something like that. Again, it's just signs of what, what, of what we're talking about on the Japanese model, that some of the ridge is going off in towards the southeast of Europe, around Italy, down towards Greece, Turkey. Some of it pulling back into the central part of the Atlantic. So the JMA and the CFS, very similar with that sort of idea, allowing this trough to really dig in across the country. It's not particularly cold, but you, we could be starting to pull somewhat cooler air into that trough, perhaps uh, particularly later on. And then finally, uh, we go through to the final week period as far as we can go. This remember this hasn't been updated since New Year's Eve, so that's the caveat. It's not. Uh, it's a little bit out of date. But by the time we get through to New Year's Eve, uh, by the time we get through to the final week, I should say, uh, on the twenty first or twenty seventh of January, um, we're moving the trough over towards Scandinavia. Then we're taking it further eastwards. Uh, we've got this ridge in the central part of the Atlantic, so we could be entrenching colder air then into. The that trough as it's pushing off towards Scandinavia, yeah, we could be putting in colder air from the north. Um, so perhaps we finally go through to the final stages of January, the last week to 10 days of month, and things could be uh, turning colder then. I think the Japanese were sort of hinting at that idea as well, that late January, if you want some colder weather, late January is probably when uh, you've got the best chance of it occurring. Of course, as go further out with this, it gets more are more unreliable, so uh, we're going to have to wait and see, obviously. But uh, yeah, if you want it, Carl, you're probably going to have quite a wait, and it may not be until late on in the month that we start to get somewhat colder air coming through. But I don't want you running away with the idea about talking about severely cold weather here, because there's no real blocking to act as a mechanism on any of these uh, JMA or CFS charts. There's no real blocking there over the Arctic to really push that cold air from the pole down into the mid latitudes and that's what you need to get very very cold conditions uh, at this time of the year. Now this stratospheric warming is still causing me problems. This is the latest uh, update from the from the GFS model uh, for the next couple of weeks. This is from the website metroseal.fr. This is the view of the stratosphere over the uh, North Pole. Yellow is where the warming is occurring in the stratosphere in the upper layers of the atmosphere. Blue is where we've got 
be traditionally and uh, normal sort of cold conditions uh, over the stratosphere. Now let's see what's happening on the latest update. We're looking to push those yellow colours into the palm and then uh, get them as warm as we can get them. Uh, really. Now I have got this warming going on from both uh, the Siberian side of the pile just there and from Greenland just there. So very gradually uh, this warming is pushing in towards the top of the pole which is sort of centred around here. It does get quite warm uh, around Greenland. Uh, we're going towards the orange colours uh, there, so really quite warm around Greenland, but it's not really infiltrating into the pole. Now, we do get a little bit of a split occurring just here over the pole by the time we get through to the 7th of January. That looks like it's the key date, the 7th of January. We are uh, splitting the polar vortex a little bit right at the very top of the stratosphere um, as we go through to the 7th of January. So a split is occurring, but it's not a dramatically warm uh, pole by any means it's just a bit of a warming uh, okay now so blue colors are pushing off but as we run through actually we find that that uh, split doesn't last all that long we get through towards uh, the uh, 10th of january and already uh, the blue colors are coming back it's already started to cool down i'm just not sure if this is significant enough really to change the pattern we've got a very strong um westerly flow going on uh, at the moment across the northern hemisphere or across our side of hemisphere anyway very strong westerlies um very uh, cold conditions coming out of the arctic in towards greenland uh, over the next week to 10 days that's going to cause these or help cause these westerly winds i'm just not sure if this is significant enough really to be changing the pattern as we go through to the extended range of the uh, gfs model um we see that the blue curves really do come back quite strongly there by the time you get through towards the 18th of january middle of the month at the extended range of course uh, the blue curves are well and truly back i'm just not sure if that is enough to break us out of this westerly flow and produce some blocking i think it will produce blocking somewhere um it may be out of the canadian side but i'm just not sure if this is enough really uh to be breaking up this very entrenched pattern i mean this is what we're looking at for uh, next thursday from the gfs model um really really strong uh, westerly flow coming through these purple colors up here over greenland and coming down towards Iceland indicative of a very uh, very cold air coming out of the uh, polar regions and sort of exploding areas of low pressure as they reach uh, the warmer waters of the Atlantic exploding areas of low pressure and strengthening the jet stream uh, so that's what we're looking at on Thursday the 8th of westerly coming uh, through and as we run through we keep it very unsettled with low pressure up to the north strong polar vortex high pressure around these oars really strong high pressure 1045 millibars and it could turn very mild next weekend by the way, we could be looking at temperatures up to 15 uh, Celsius uh, for a time next week, came down in the south. Um, so that's going to be quite noteworthy. The winds here, the ice bars are backing down towards the tropical Atlantic, and we are bringing up some uh, really warm air for the time of year. Potentially next weekend, it's a little way off, but it could turn very, very mild indeed, almost spring like perhaps. As we go through to Monday the 12th, still the same basic setup high pressure to the south, but low pressure is to the north get through uh, beyond even day 10 up to Tuesday the 13th and we're still bringing that westy flow so there's nothing there despite that that warming is occurring around the south we do get a little bit of split in the uh, polar vortex in the stratosphere there's nothing really there to suggest the pattern is changing uh, fundamentally anytime soon that uh, westerly does look very very uh, entrenched and we may have to wait right to the end of the month uh, before we really start to see signs of it breaking down uh, the ECMWS for game this is uh, for Thursday the 8th strong westerly flow coming through the country low pressure to the north high pressure to the south we get through to uh, Friday the 9th same idea westerly is really strong westerly is going through into a Saturday the 10th and again we're pushing up some very warm air uh, for the time of year anyway uh, particularly into southern parts of the country look how deep uh, those purple colours are over Greenland Iceland really really strong zonal flow uh, coming through it's going to take a lot to break that down as we get through today 10, Monday the 12th, again, no change, high pressure to the south, low pressure to the north, bringing that uh, westerly through, no sign of any really cold weather there, the GM finally, below pressure to the north, high pressure to the south, on Thursday the 8th, it will turn more unsettled next week, uh, that will be a key point off tomorrow's weekend forecast, so it will be starting off quite a bit of dry weather in the south, but it will gradually 
to more and more unsettled through the course of the week. We get through to Saturday the 10th, and a little bit different with this one. The air is slightly cold. We don't push up that uh, sort of tropical southwesterly flow on Saturday uh, the 10th, so it's a little bit cooler on the GM next week, but it's still the same basic idea with westerlies uh, dominating, keeping it very unsettled. This is the day 10 chart uh, for uh, Monday the 12th, and again, up high pressure to south, low pressure to the north. Just a little bit of a sign of a change there to the very, very far north. There's a slight nose of high pressure trying to edge down from the bowl in towards Greenland. So uh, that really is one uh, very, uh, very slight straw to clutch um, from the GM. There's just a very, very little nose of high pressure coming out of the bowl in towards the uh, far top of Greenland on that chart. But uh, that really, really is uh, clutching at straws if you want it, Carl. I think we're looking at a strong westerly uh, for uh, the next week to 10 days um, and it'll turn more south. I think at some point through the first half of January we're likely to get quite an intense storm so that's something to look out for it'll turn very mild uh, next week down in the south as well but uh, overall westerly is dominating will it get colder in the second half of the month? The hints are there from the Japanese and the southwest I think um, but you're going to have a bit of a wait uh, I think you're going to have to go probably right to the final week, perhaps, of the month before we could push down some proper northerly flows. That's how we're looking this morning. As ever, it's all speculative. These long-range uh, charts are highly experimental, so it's just for fun, really. Don't take it too seriously. We'll be doing the weekend forecast tomorrow. Um, and that's all for now. Thanks for watching.